This is LS, and you're on Thorin's YouTube channel. So Important. Western shit. With LS, someone you'll have seen frequently on my talk shows, someone who in StarCraft was at kind of a semi-pro level, has played in a number of games early on and been very good. And in League of Legends, obviously had connections to the MVP house, has been a streamer for many years, has been a coach for teams like Gravity, Tempo, Storm, has been a commentator for the LCK. It's been announced that he is a coach for the BBQ Olivers, the former LCK team who got relegated in the Challenger. Now that in itself is exciting, not least because I want to see what kind of talent scouting LS can do. That's one of the things he often prides himself on, having found people like Alfari, Bwipo, long before Crown even, long before other people hailed them as these monster players with incredible mechanics. One of the moves which hints at something quite interesting is that in this lineup that BBQ has announced, LS has already seemingly had impact by bringing in an outside player, a non-Korean player. And not only that, not even an Asian player. He's brought in the Swedish jungler Malice. So even though I don't know this player, that's already an interesting reason to keep track of the team beyond just the fact that LS is there. And there is the potential, which is what this video is about, of LS doing that more, which I think he would, especially because, look in the description box below, I put a Twitch clip where he actually says he wants to have a foreigner house, like a non-Korean house, where Western pros can come and practice and sort of level up and boot camp. And the implication, obviously, is that if LS finds someone or he sees someone who's grinding away and who has potential, they don't have to necessarily be a top pro, perhaps he'll try and get them into BBQ Olivers, and if BBQ Olivers gets into the LCK, that means that you have Western players playing in the LCK. That's why I labeled this the Underground Railroad, because for people who don't know, the Underground Railroad is that term given to like the secret network they had in the United States when there was slavery still to allow people to who were slaves to escape from the states with slavery into the areas that didn't have slavery or Canada or whatever else and live a free life, hopefully. So yeah, obviously that's like an extreme example to give, but I'm giving it as an analogy because the concept is they were getting out of an area where people didn't want them to live a certain life and then they were going to another one where they could be free. Well, what I want to see here is I want to see Westerners compete against the best Koreans and do it in the best Korean league and not just some international tournament with all variables of like, it's a different competition, these teams never played each other and like, oh, diff yeah, traveling and then can people handle different time zones and food and stuff. Let's take all those factors out. Let's watch these guys play because normally the LCK teams wouldn't want Western players, and especially not talent they've never heard of. So this is a way LS can actually sneak some of these guys in potentially and get a lot of us in the West even more interested. Now, I'm already very interested in the LCK, but I think this will be a great reason to kind of hype Western fans and make them want to give it a try, actually, because imagine seeing some of the talents that LS does big up like that. It's like, oh, these guys are going to be monsters, like give them a few years. It takes normally years or splits or a whole bunch of time before other people start to see it because LS scouts some sort of solo queue or they come to Korea or they talk to him or he notices them by someone giving him a hot tip. Imagine them just going into the LCK, even as a sub and getting to see them build their careers then would be an extra reason to watch and be interested in the LCK, right? How thrilling would that be? I can already tell you that in esports history, we've already had scenarios like this that were very exciting and for these very reasons and got a lot of casual Western fans interested in the top Korean leagues who wouldn't have watched it if it was only Koreans. So StarCraft, LS's home game, StarCraft Brood War, actually has this as quite a common trend actually, which was from the very beginning of the 2000s when the OSL and the MSL and the Pro League, etc., were starting to get going and the Korean scene was really getting built. You had a whole bunch of what they called foreigners, which just meant non-Koreans, going over to play in the Korean system in Korean team houses and compete in these leagues. So in the early days, you had people like Grr and Elki, who actually had a lot of success and even were placing in the top placings of like OSLs in these massive tournaments. Later, you had people like the Polish player Draco. You had obviously the infamously the uh, North American Terran player Idra, who later on obviously became a Zerg player, Starcraft 2 is more famous for that. But he was a guy just grinding away. He was on the... Um, uh, East Draw slash CG Entus team, who's in their team house as like a B team player and a practice partner initially. This made Western fans incredibly hyped. Even people who wouldn't watch the whole tournament, they'd keep track of that guy and see what that guy is doing in the same way as if you're a, a fan of tennis from Serbia, but you're not a huge fan of all tennis, no matter how bad Djokovic gets, you're going to keep a track of what he's doing, right? You're going to at least say, ah, oh, well, what's he doing? He's a guy that's from my country, I know his basis. Now, 
when you go beyond Brood War, you had in StarCraft 2 a similar scenario, especially because it was a lot more open to be able to go there. You just went and entered the competition. You didn't have to be in a team house necessarily. So in the early days, we had Jinro, and then we had Nanawa at his peak back during the Blue Draw and Festa era, early 2012, when he was actually able to make some sick runs. You had, let me think, well, Scarlet, obviously, went and lived in Korea for a long time, was even able to make, like, top eight at GSL. You had Neeb, who managed to make top four at GSL recently in Cordes, the toughest tournament in the world, and they were making solid runs and really proving themselves over there. In League of Legends, you have this example for people who don't know, which is in the early days when they first launched OGN Champions, the tournament that later on became the LCK a couple of years later, you had initially a bunch of Western teams actually fly out there because it was season two, it was the open circuit. You had Fnatic, you had Dignitas, you had CLG. Now, interestingly enough, people might not be aware of this, but on Summoning the Insight, Monty said when he was the coach of CLG, he wanted them to go over, maybe in the off season for... Uh, LC, LCS, like they'd go and play just in the winter season of Champions before the LCK. Unfortunately, they basically got banned from doing it by Riot, saying that like they'd banned their accounts and also implying that like you couldn't just move there and do whatever you wanted. Yeah, that's kind of an annoying aspect. Oh, gee, I think all, like Riot Korea, we were talking about banned them rather. So one of the things that I think is cool about this is it also means, like, yes, we're a long way away from this being like a regular thing or a consistent thing that can happen. But in a world where it does, we're dreaming here, it's a hypothetical. Imagine if top Western pros or players who once were top Western pros, legendary names, could now actually choose to go to Korea as a special challenge. Like they've already won the LCS. They've already had some good worlds placing. Now they want to go and test their metal. Like, could I make it against the Koreans? Could I make it in an environment where I don't even speak the language and it'd be so tough and harsh, but everyone's super driven, practicing hard. It'd be like the ultimate practice environment. And also, like imagine how legendary it would be to accomplish that and a special new challenge for already great players because great players tend to relish challenges and someone saying they can't do something and something seeming impossible. So you think of people like Bjergsen, like Jensen, Froggen, Forgiven, Doublelift, people who seemingly would thrive in this environment or who would take the challenge head on and who have the skill, the experience and the tenure that they might even be able to do it. They might be able to succeed. And God, imagine how thrilling that would be to watch them and hoping they make the playoffs or seeing them go to head with the fakers and BDDs of the world directly in those leagues and actually themselves at a disadvantage as opposed to when the Someday's, Flames, Bang, Piglet of the world come over to Korea and we, North American LCS from Korea, and we judge them as, oh, ah, see, he's not any good anymore when he's playing with North Americans and doesn't speak the language and has his own ridiculous challenge even if the skill level's not quite the challenge overall because I know again LS is someone who would entertain this he's a guy where if he's a coach he'd consider doing one of these moves over some rookie Korean that he can't quite be sure about especially knowing by the way that if you do this Think about all the added benefits if it worked out. The sponsorship potential of Western companies who might be able to sponsor and get a foot into the Korean market. Korean fans getting hyped over a different type of player to cheer for. Someone who's not just a random player in the league because often they tend to cheer mainly for ex-fan favorites, uh, or rather fan favorites and ex-pros and champions. <coughs> people have won before basically or who are legends this would be a new type of person to cheer for I can tell you when some of those foreigners I mentioned in Starcraft and in Starcraft 2 and in League of Legends went over they were very popular people like Doublelift were loved in Korea especially because remember one of the things I found out there is they will let in Korean culture foreigners get away with things that they won't let Koreans get away with because we don't know their etiquette we don't know their social system we don't know the formal language they have so they don't mind you being a little bit cheeky and having a bit of banter you could play a perfect villain in that sense you'd also have a lot of fans you'd have a fan base you'd have one of those uh, sort of groups that cheers for you at the beginning of the game like there are so many upsides to this if it could work out sure we're a long way away from it being anything serious this is just a Swedish guy competing under a North American guy as a coach in Challenger at the moment we don't know yet that they'll make it to the LCK if they do we don't know yet that he'll be able to bring in these players but it's certainly a tantalizing prospect and you imagine how much fun it could be to follow and how it could add a whole new twist to the LCK and bring in a totally different type and cross-section of fans from the West especially one day if it was one of those names like a Björk and a frog and Jensen Reckless, whoever it might be, who went over there. And it's not that unreasonable towards the end of their careers. They might give it a shot. They've done everything else, right? Plus, obviously, imagine if one of the rookies or the newer young players who 
LS considers to have talent and gets into the team, actually then does develop, but they develop to be good in LCK. Imagine then the hype, by the way, going the other way when that player is important to our Western squad or that player, I mean, they're not going to get to Worlds through LCK, but somehow actually gets to show his skills and build his own brand. Wouldn't that be an incredibly unique brand to have built, right? Outside the scope or the context of any other in League of Legends history. This video was kindly supported by Dean Tanglis, Andreas Snazor Westerland, Gardner Wilson, Oli J, Tobias Bernasconi, Nate DOGG, James Harding, Kyla Harris, Travis Greb, Daniel Yordanov, and as always, a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion. Would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for some of my upcoming content? Perhaps you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA. Do you want to see some teasers? See who's going to be the next guest on one of my shows? Maybe you want to take part in an esports discussion with me. Well, put your money where your mouth is and join the Screluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.